Beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> I... No, not at all, Josine. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. It's good. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Hey, folks, this is Sean Heinrichs. I am a filmmaker, photographer, conservation storyteller, whatever you want to call me. I love nature. I love telling stories about nature. I love working with people who care about nature. Today is World Earth Day, and I couldn't think of a better place than to be spending time right now with my dear friend and fellow conservationist, Josine Tiovane, who works for Diubiak, which is a local NGO in New Caledonia. And they are bringing together traditional peoples to protect one of the most sacred places I've ever been in my life. We're gonna be premiering, actually we just premiered at the Earth Optimism Summit of, of the Smithsonian, our new film, the world premiere, and it's called Mount Penye, The Last Stand for New Caledonia's Sacred Cowrie. And what that's about is the tallest peak in New Caledonia. And it's this massive peak. And I can tell you, I hiked from sea level to the top of it, a mile vertically straight uphill. It's every bit a mile. And I can tell you that the, the blisters are still on my feet, but it's a beautiful place. And atop that mountain is this forest and it's got these cowrie trees endemic cowrie trees that live, I think, to over a thousand years old. Yeah. In, in addition, there's a lot of other flora and fauna on this mountain. And I think, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it's got the highest concentration of endemic flora found anywhere in the world, like density. It's a very, very special place. And I could go on for hours and we will talk a little bit more about it. But before I get started, Josine, as chief scientific officer, can you tell us a little bit about what makes this place so special? Um, so just first, thank you, thank you, Sean, for for giving me the privilege to be with you today for, for this great event. It's a very uh, good uh, good thing for us for the UBIC, So thank you. And why why this place is so important? Uh, because um, uh, there is a, a a link, very strong link uh, with people here, uh, uh, environmental link because. Uh, uh, as you know, New Caledonia is the smallest hotspot of biodiversity in the world. Uh, we have here a unique uh, um, ecosystem, uh, like a territorial and marine ecosystem. And Montpagny is an example of this uh, rich biodiversity. Uh, mm. We have uh, endemic, microendemic species, and uh, we the, 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 we want to, to protect this place with a, the rich reef approach because. People here are linked with this place, are linked with the environment. Forest and river give uh, food, give uh, goods uh, and services for people. And uh, yeah, it's important to, to take care of all of this. We have uh, down to the to the Montpagne um, a lagoon, which is part of the wild uh, retail site. So it's a big challenge for us to, to preserve this uh, this place. And also there is a, a, another another signification for us. There is a cultural um, importance for local people. As uh, we try to we explain uh, when you were with, with us, and uh, Montpagny uh, have, have a, has a cultural value. People here uh, belong to this place. By their, their name come from some area on this mountain. Uh, their totem live in this forest. And for Kanak people, for Kanak culture, nature and culture are inseparable. So it's important to... to mm protect this. And we, we talk about the Kauri, you symbolize, yeah. symbolize is all, all three with a um, ecological, ecological value, very strong, very um, microendemic species, endangered species, and uh, it represents for local people, a guardian uh, to the mountain, a guardian of the mountain. It's kind of a missing thing, but, but uh, they, 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 they are the link between the world of living and the world of invisible, the ancestral mm -hmm. spirits. Right. So it's for important. those who are just joining us, uh, we've got Josine from, uh, she's Chief <laughs> Scientific Officer for Diabique, which is a local NGO in New Caledonia. I bet a lot of people don't even know where New Caledonia is. And if you want to sort of get to New Caledonia, you can either get in a boat or plane and head directly north of New Zealand, or maybe directly yeah. east of Brisbane. If you both leave at the same time, you might hit New Caledonia. It's got one of the largest islands in the Pacific, um, the main island in New Caledonia, and uh, incredible, beautiful place. I was so honored to work with the Conservation International in Diabique to come and tell that story. It's a really awesome place. 
And what was really interesting is I remember on one day, I'm in the water filming these incredible manta rays off this beautiful reef. And then getting in a car, driving, sunrise, we look up this mile tall mountain and I get told we're gonna take our equipment up there. And I remember about, I thought we were halfway up and your husband Cedric corrected me and he said, no, we're about a quarter of the way up. I was already out of food, out of water. <laughs> And I had thought that I'd done the hardest part, but I had no idea. This, this is truly a formidable mountain. And mm. the local people looked like they were floating up the hill. They're barefoot and just floating up with these heavy packs. And I yeah. am drenched in sweat. I had to take my shirt off and wring it out again and again and again. But what I noticed along the way were some really incredible stuff. The rivers are crystal clear. Like so few places I go in the world do you ever see a place where the rivers are just pouring down and you can see straight through. And I realized that there's something special about this place. It, it's not perfect, but there's so much beauty there. And it's interesting because we talk about the concept of ridge to reef. And here I am literally on the reef. And then the next day, and I wish I could have said by half day, but really it was as the sun was setting, I finally yeah. summited the peak, <laughs> drenched in sweat, body aching and saw one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen. It was gorgeous. So what is it about Ridge to Reef conservation? What does that involve? Because people talk about that, but how is in the case of Mount Pena, can you explain to me a little bit about how very directly the reef is actually connected to what's happening on that mountain? Okay, um, uh, like uh, we can see uh, in, the, in the film, people, um, uh, you see the lady of Montpagne uh, fishing shrimp in the river, and we saw people yeah find goods and services in 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 the forest in the river and uh, and and the rich reef approach is when if if there is impact if there is threat in the in the mountain this uh, affect uh, uh, affect also the reef like uh, we have um, we have a uh, trace in the forest uh, like a uh, deer invasive species deer and mm. pig and pigs make erosion fire also uh, uh, the impact direct uh, they, they have a direct impact on the on the forest yeah. regeneration and after all the of all the, all the sediment just go down to the reef and also impact the reef also impact the the marine uh, biodiversity so we need to to mm. to do something on the top in the river to in the forest to protect all of all of all of all of, all of, the, of this uh, ecosystem so you know, it's interesting I, I, because i i noticed that um when we came down Montpellier and we followed these waterfall trails and these are some of the most gorgeous cascading waterfalls i've ever seen in the world and i will say i've been very fortunate i have been to some of the most gorgeous places on earth as a filmmaker doing environmental stories i've been to the mm -hmm. continents i've seen the jungles i've seen the reefs and I have to say, I was blown away. I, my bar is fairly high, and I was absolutely blown away by how gorgeous and clean these cascading waterfalls. And you could literally watch from the top of the mountain as they went down dozens upon dozens of falls, turned a bend, entered this big estuary, and then there was the reef that I literally, I saw the reef that mm -hmm. just the day before I had been filming the manta rays on. And just yeah. to see in one frame, because we talk about Ridge to Reef, but when you actually see it, and then I also saw rivers that were coming out of areas that weren't protected. And it was a very different story. There was a brown color to them. And I had checked out those reefs earlier in the week and they were covered in algae and they were dying. And I really struck me about how important it is. If you want to protect a reef, you have to protect the rivers and then you have to protect yeah. the forest that's protecting the rivers or you're not going to protect the reef. And so we have to really look at it in a comprehensive way. What was also interesting is the story of the shrimp. Because yes. I'm thinking, aren't shrimp in the ocean? So can you give me a little bit about the story about these really interesting, I mean, they're big too. They're like full-size prawns. These aren't little tiny shrimp. What, what's up with yes. the shrimp? What's their life cycle like? Um, the, the, the shrimp, uh, they start the live, uh, the, lar the lar larva, the yep. life. Uh, in the, down in the um, in the estuary, and after yeah. they go up to the river and go to to the river on the top near, to the forest, and 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 if uh, if 
if uh, water is didn't clear, it doesn't clear, that makes problem for the shrimp. So people need who live in in Okuna, they they used to to fish shrimp, and if they they, they lose this uh, way of life, it's it's, just, it's sad for them. So it's, it's very important. It was really interesting because I'm mostly a marine person, right? So oceans when it comes to water. And here I am in this beautiful clear stream and I see these, these women and they're, they put on the mask and they rub leaves on it, put on their yeah, face yeah. and they just disappear. And they don't just like drop down for a second. These are free divers and they're crawling cool. under the ridges and under the ledges and they come out with this net and they've got these beautiful prawns in there. And I mean, these are full like ocean dwelling creatures. And I did the drive up to get there. This is not just a flat estuary. These animals are working their way up a river to get to this yeah. spot. It is not an easy journey. No, hey, by no. the way, Josine, you look a bit like you're in the four-wheel drive vehicle that we took because you got a lot of bounce in your screen. Uh, it reminds <laughs> me of our drive. So if you could try to like steady that camera a bit, <laughs> put it on the ground. Perfect. Um, so I really, I really love that aspect of it. Something else I also want to share, which is the first time I've experienced this, was how the people here are so directly connected from a substance, a food standpoint, to the land. I remember we went out fishing with the community, and we had to hike along the banks, and all the dogs came with, and it was like everyone came out. And they're like, oh, we're going to go fishing for prawns. And so I'm filming this, and then I turn around, and out of the forest come all of these foods vegetables, fruits, and, and legumes, and an entire spread, an entire meal is built out of people just foraging right in the area, not miles away. And we had the most That's delicious true. meal cooked right on that beach. And if yeah. I had ever seen an instance where people were so connected to their land, how is that still possible? What, is, what, what makes that type of connectivity still possible for the people of Mount Penye? What it means, was it because... Uh, Why are they still able to live in that way? What it, is it, obviously, there's been some protection that's come into place. Yeah, but because uh, the environment is a, is a part of us, is a part of, uh, of Kanaka mm -hmm. way of life. And, and it's important to, 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 to take care of it. People just... Uh, just uh, I, I say... They, they, they need, uh, they need uh, the environment to live. They, they, they are in connection with them. It's strong connection. And we still, this, this way of life, we're still keeping uh, since a long time with uh, our ancestor and try to, 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 to do this to our children, our, our new generation, to continue, continue to live like that. Because it's interesting, a lot of folks who may be watching this tonight they often say, I'm going into nature. It's almost like a holiday, right? And it's like, oh, let's go get a little bit of taste of nature. Uh, I felt the community there, there was no separation. They were no. part of the earth. They were part of the river. They were part of the mountain. And there wasn't even the concept of separate, apart from. It was very much a part of. And there was no question about it. It's, be it's, it's, it's really beautiful. It's hard to to explain, yes, because yeah, we we live in since I live in since I I I am a young young person, but yeah, we are very close to the to nature around us, and and it's um and we like to to share and take care of this uh, of this place, share share what we what she the place the nature give uh, give to us, and mm. yeah, people uh, with us. It's yeah. really beautiful, and it's as clean and authentic as I've ever seen. It's just a direct line. We live off the land. If we don't treat the land well, it doesn't feed us. It doesn't give us the basket-weaving materials that come off the right palms. It doesn't give us all the things we need to survive. And so it's not a question of as a luxury. It's a necessity to look after that. And I, my fear was, wow, what happens if this goes away? What happens to the people? What happens to these people if we don't protect this area, what happens? Uh, it's, um, like I say, uh, there is a strong connection with, with nature and, and people, yeah, if we don't uh, take care of, of this place, we, we lose a part of us, we lose a part of our, our identity because 
everything who um, the signification of your kind of identity is is there just to, if if we don't do something to to protect this we're gonna lose a a, a part of of us so yeah it's uh and why it's hard to I mean, the currency, it, I didn't see a lot of money being exchanged in the community. I saw a lot of food Ooh, yeah. and materials being exchanged. If that goes yeah. away, there's going to be economic hardship, right? Yeah, but uh, people here, yeah, they, le, we try to live like with a, a exchange um, just with, with food and, and we don't... Uh, Money, money come after to help us to to improve uh, our management plan or, or like this. But first, we need to 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 just focus on the on 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 the on the on what we, we really need. So the the forest, the river, the nature around us. Yeah, one of the things that was really interesting when I went up the mountain with your team, again covered in sweat feeling like I needed to get in the gym more or get out of the gym more actually, get hiking more, um, was the fact that as beautiful as these, these forests were, I, as we got into certain parts of the forest, I noticed two things. I noticed these big muddy patches mm -hmm. and with hoof yeah. marks in them. And then from them where the water was running off, kind of a lot of the undergrowth had lost. And then I noticed mm -hmm. entire sections of the forest, the trees no longer had leaves on them and they were looking pretty dead. What, what's going on right now? What is what's happening to this forest right now? In in the in this forest, in the Caris forest uh, and all the forests around Montpagnier, there is a, a big problem with uh, pigs. We have uh, invasive species who come in the forest and make a lot of damage, and mostly pigs and and deers. They just uh, with uh, activity um, uh, make erosion. And yeah. this impact the the regeneration of the forest and all the all the mood all the things just go down to the reef and after to the river and the reef yeah there's there's a very a big problem with an invasive species here because they 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 are not come they are not from here they just uh, arrive away with James Cook for the pigs and yeah it's not a, a it's not a species from here. So they just have a yeah. free life in the, in the forest and just make a lot of damage. Yeah, I noticed they don't forage like natural forest animals. They go to one area and they just yeah. clear it out flat until there's nothing left. There's just it's just mud. True, yeah. And then that erodes, yeah. right? It's true, It was yeah. really shocking to see that. It was. And it's then true. what about what's happening with, with climate and some of the fungus and what's happening with... The canopy. What's happening to some of these trees? Oh yeah, I, in, I just want to to add that the, the impact you can see. Uh, I just see the the pictures of the Kauri forest. Don't you remember the the soil? There's no more soil, just roots uh, yeah. uh, around the place, and and yeah, a lot of erosion and and climate change is also um, uh, a stress effect affecting the the, the cloud forest. Uh, there's less uh, rain, less uh, clouds. The, the trees are under pressure. In the soil, there is uh, the mm. uh, fungus, a pathogen, pathogen fungus. Uh, yeah. It, um, the, 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 it move like with uh, pigs movement. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, and yeah, it's like a, a virus and attacked all the all the tree. The old tree just die. It's, it's the reason why uh, the cowrie is, is dying today. Mm. I felt that I, when we were interviewing some of the community members, they reflected on what it looked like when they were children and how none of that damage, was, even not even children, when they were just a few years ago. It's happening quickly, right? Yeah, very quickly. So since uh, 15 years, uh, the old, old man from Montpagnier start to... Say something wrong happened for for this forest for these trees. There is uh, something wrong, something bad. So we need to 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 do something. Yeah, one of the most important defenses against climate is both abundance and diversity, right? 
And those things create an opportunity, diversity of species and the amount, right? The total amount. Because if climate is happening, it is happening, right? Then we need to ensure that we're not reducing the resilience within the what we have, and then we want to add more, right? So I understand there are some plans right now to expand, and it seems like that may be a really good strategy. Can you talk to me a little bit about what's happening on the expansion side and what's being planned? Yeah, for the for um, because if the 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 the, the particularity of the Kauri, the Kauri of Montpagnier, the microendemic Kauri is a is a, a microendemic species, endangered species, and if we want to protect uh, the this this species, we have to protect all the population of Kauri, and mm. is uh, uh, on on the top of uh, Montpagnier Massif. So we need to yeah. to extend to to. To, to do the work of all of on all the the population and yeah all the population and we have uh, to improve the management plan to uh, call with uh, people talk with people to to be agree with this and 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 work together it's not only on in, on this on our place it's with the other local community around the Montpagne and to be agreed to do this and yeah to to protect all the for all the Macaui forest, all the forest, all the river. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, the math is really simple. If the trees are sick, the more trees that you protect, the greater chance some of them are going to survive, right? And if the forest is of invasive species, you're reducing the diversity because other endemic species are getting killed. So by reducing the impact of those invasive species and expanding the area, we're doing the two best things we could do right now because we can't turn off climate change a second. We're going to try, but we can't. It's going to take work. But we can yeah. do something right now to protect this area and make a difference. Yeah. yeah. And we, it feels we, really important. It's important. And we, we, we already may focus our action on invasive species regulation, and, and we have to, to, to improve this and continue the work to, mm. to, to make sure that uh, we, we can reduce the impact on the environment you know it's interesting when i i talk and i hear the word you know ridge to reef right i i again want to reflect on how clear it was to me standing atop mount Penier and just seeing both the the sacred cowrie forest but also seeing some of the erosion and then following that downstream into the rivers into the tributaries, into the bigger and bigger rivers, and then actually seeing it washing out onto the very reef that I was just diving on. And, you know, there's manta cleaning stations right out there along those reef systems. There's entire reef ecosystems. There's fish that communities depend upon. And I saw in the areas where there was no management and there was no protection, and those reefs have become lifeless. And it's that simple. Literally, by protecting that forest and by making sure that you don't extract too much from the reef, working at the ridge up here and the reef down here, protecting both ends of the system. You support all the bios, bio, biodiversity down that entire chain and all the communities yeah, that depend upon true. it. And I think I felt like the communities were some of the biggest champions for the conservation of that area. Okay. It's a big challenge, but yeah, we, 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 we need to, to make this to, 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 to allow local people to maintain the, the link with the, the, the place, with the environment. It's uh, very important. And sometimes people ask me, like, why, why, does, why does Mount Pena matter in the global concern, right? And um, I have my answer, but why does it matter to protect a place like Mount Pena in the larger scheme of conservation? Why, why does Mount Pena matter to the world? Why should it matter to the world? Oh, because it's a, it's a, like a world heritage. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, I say it's, there is a, a ecological value. This place have mm -hmm. a rich biodiversity and also there is a, a cultural value very important for local people. It's, a, it's protect the, protect the, this place. It's like you protect the, the local people, the, the identity of, of uh, the Kanak identity. So yeah, it's important to, to take care of this uh, natural and cultural heritage for us and also for our children in the future. It's, it's yeah, it's uh, for, 
converts for the, the, the local people. That's I think that's beautiful. It's unique in the world, so we need to, to take care of it. If we can't protect these great biosphere gems, right? This is a cauldron of life for an entire island. These are, these are the time capsules for biodiversity. You know, the endemic concentration of flora on this one mountain, for example. If we can't protect something as sacred as that, I think our, our hopes as a, a species of protecting other areas are lost. It's kind of like, it's our responsibilities as a global, a global community to identify these sacred places. And again, I've been all over the world. This blew my mind. Blew my mind. It is such a special place. I cannot wait to get back there, by the way. I can't wait to see you and Cedric and the whole family. And your boy's probably going to be a lot bigger when I get there. <laughs> remember what you are your hopes bigger. for your child? Tell me about your child and what your hopes are with regard to this sacred area. Oh, mm, for my child and for the, all the, the children, for the future generation, I, I hope that one day they can climb up this mountain for now, we, we just uh, try to, to resolve the problem with uh, all, this, all the damage there, there is inside. But I hope this one day that you can go back to, the, to this mountain, go to this mountain and, and appreciate the, the, the beautiful Kauri forest and, and enjoy uh, this uh, cultural and natural heritage because we, we try, we, we help to make it happen. We help to, to keep this... Uh, safe for them i can't agree more and i loved meeting your child i loved spending time in the river all of you guys it's a beautiful community it's a connected community it's a sacred mountain it's an incredible biosphere in the oceans this is a, a very special place i want to make sure folks know if you missed the earth optimism summit today ci has conservation international has set up a an entire mount pena web page we're going to be launching the video there as well. So if you missed it at the summit, you'll be able to find it on the web page. It's a beautiful film. I'm not saying that because I shot and directed it. I'm saying because it was too easy. <laughs> it was so beautiful. Such an amazing spot. Yeah, I just want to add a, um, a hands word just to say thank you to you, Sean. Thank you to, for this great film you, you, you've done and this film make a, a, an honor to our land, to our people, and thank you to, to share this for, with all, all people around the world with, with the movie. Thank you so much. And thank you to all people who watch uh, the, the live. Thank you for to supporting us also. Ah, uh, Josine, thank you. It was an honor. I can't wait to do more films with you guys. Let's just call this the beginning, like one of those movies at the end and it says the beginning. Let's, let's yeah. plan to do more. So again, go to ci.org and conservation.org and check out. You can even just Google Mount Panier Conservation International. You'll find the page. The movie will be there. Read about the programs. And let's be super clear. This program, like all conservation programs, especially right now, they need financial support. We all do. You can't save a place without investing it. So this program is already running beautifully. It needs the support to really go big. And I think if I were to name one of the top places in the world that I'd want to protect, this is really high on the list. So you guys are doing sacred work over there at Dayubik and Conservation International in New Caledonia. Let's everybody tune in after this, go straight to the webpage, offer your support, and uh, make it a point one day to come visit Mount Panier. But I tell you, first get in shape. Because <laughs> it's a hike, and it's a beautiful hike, but it's a hard hike. So um, is there anything else you want to offer, Josine, before we sign off? No, you, uh, you say everything uh, important. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, CI. Thank you, all the uh, people who, who are here in, on this uh, live. And, and yeah, we need your help. We need you to, to, to continue the work we've done here. So thank you. Awesome. So we're signing off, Justine. You can just hit the X up in the upper right side of the corner. And thank you for hosting me, guys. And Conservation International, you're an amazing partner. It's such an honor to work yeah. with you. Take care guys.